there will be the days when the self-doubt creeps in, right? Yeah. Those negative thoughts creep in. I'm a I'm like obsessed with positive affirmations. If you validate yourself and you acknowledge you're already exactly where you should be in this exact moment. Right. Like really take a pause. Like you're already exactly where you should be. Yeah. Like sitting down, Hoover's listening to this, watching this. It's like, this is where you're supposed to be. Right. Like, so there's nothing to judge. Yeah. How do you overcome that negative self-talk? But more importantly, how do you just stop caring what people think? This is the question I get asked all the time, and this is the question we are saying yes to today on The Yes Life, which is the show where I share people and ideas to help you get to your yes life. Now, if you're wondering, what is the yes life? Well, that is the life you truly love. When you get to say, yes, this is my purpose. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is who I'm supposed to be with, where I'm supposed to be living. And today I am so excited to have Rachel McCord in the studio. Thank you so much for saying yes and joining us today. Oh my gosh, yes. I'll do anything you ever say. We all know this, but I was especially excited to come back to the studio yeah. and hang with you. I'm like so pumped. I mean, you just like, you're a female entrepreneur. You're a female empower us you empower so many people actress model I mean the list goes on and on I'm um, the founder of the McCord list but I really wanted to bring you in especially for this talk topic because you're so involved in the industry you're absolutely gorgeous but you just stay true to who you are throughout like and you just you somehow it seems like you just have learned how to ignore all the bs <laughs> well i mean and it is a lot of bs and i think yeah. the first thing to remember is that if it's bs like you don't really have to believe it right so you know like in a lot of cases like anything that's coming at you it's really kind of grounded in i always say like haters are um people with unfulfilled potential i got that from my man rick and it's true right yeah. it's like when we're out there and we're rocking at life and we love it it's like we don't actually have time to hate on anybody so I look at it like, look, if someone's coming at you with adversity, you have to acknowledge that they're probably going through something really hard in their right. own life. And I don't know. I just have a heart for them. I, I genuinely have compassion because I think about it and I'm like, dude, like you don't feel like that when you feel great about yourself. Right. You don't sit there and like hate on everybody on Instagram. Like that would be so yeah. basic. Yeah. Like you obviously have too much time, you yeah. know? But I love, I mean, you, like, you do everything with a purpose. And I feel like you just, like, your goal is just to impact one person. Like, it's like and I love, like, what, what you are even saying mm -hmm. yesterday. Like, that is the greatest gift is to hear, like, hey, I, Rachel, I heard your story. Or you posted this, and it really impacted me. Oh, that's and, so and it's just, like, but how did you become so... Like, how did you go deep and figure out who you are? Yeah, well, I mean, it's such a process. I look at life really as a journey, right? Yeah. Like, I know everyone says that. It sounds so cliche, but I really mean it. It's like, you. it really is a process. Like, I would dream that today I'm a different person than I was as my hoop is going all crazy. <laughs> over here. It, it's a, I'm a different person today than I was a month ago or a year ago. And so I believe in the constant progress of growth right. and how powerful that is to be able to look at your life and say, like, hey, am I changing? Am I trying transforming? Am I evolving as a human being? And, you know, in entertainment, it's like that's, it's you look at like a Madonna or a Lady Gaga, right? You see like the transitions in their careers and you know that the reality is you can't really fake that. Right. There's like so much truth to that process of like, hey, I'm actually evolving. I'm actually transforming because the closer people get into your lives, the more you deal with paparazzi and things like that, which I'm always like, what's up guys? <laughs> like, I'm never page. complaining about that. <laughs> but, um, but the more out there your life becomes, the more more you need to be transparent, the more you need to be authentic, because the truth is, is like anybody can buy fake, like anybody can buy that, right? right? But there's something really powerful about sticking to who you are and knowing that there's something like really beautiful about that and how that freedom creates freedom for other people. Right. And I'm just kind of like seeking those people out. Like I want to find the people in every single room, on every show, in every stage I ever go on, I want to find those people who need to be like pulled out and just like fully love on them so that they can learn how to fully love on themselves because freedom happens when you love yourself unconditionally because you're saying it doesn't matter what you say it doesn't matter what you do I love you I accept you and I believe in you right. and we can be that for our best friends our moms can be it for us right yeah. but a lot of times we can't be that for ourselves and so when we're able to invite ourselves to do that it's transformative Wow, so many things you said. I just love right there. Yay. But and people want to be seen. They want to be heard. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they feel like saying negative things, It's like you said, it's a reflection back on them. That's how mm -hmm. they feel about themselves. Totally. They don't feel seen, and they're like, why would you do this? You're ugly. You're whatever. Not fat enough. Mm -hmm. But 
when those when those negative things start creeping in, do you have tools? Because everybody has negative self-talk. Yeah. Everybody deals with jealousy. Everybody, you know, it's being human. Mm -hmm. So when you start feeling like that or those negative thoughts start creeping in, is there something that you do or tools yes. that you can kind of repel them? Yeah, for sure. So the first thing I would say is that I look at haterade, as I call it, <laughs> um, in two different ways, right? There's haterade that is just fluff and noise. It goes on my Instagram, it goes on Daily Mail comments, and it goes away, right? right. That doesn't affect me at all. I mean, it, has no, it literally has no effect on my career, on my life, right. on my heart. I see it, and I'm like, oh, cool, I must be doing something right. I was going to say, if I'm you getting shade. haters. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> haters yeah. doing something yeah, right. right. I take shade. Haters and stalkers. Like, yeah. if you don't have those two, like, you're not working right. in entertainment. <laughs> Um, but then there's the other side of haters. This is the stuff that like causes more of a reaction. And I like to be real and be like, hey, look, this affects me. And here's what I'm doing to, to solve that. Because those are the, the moments when you're getting the real nuggets of truth, right? right? No one wants to hear, oh, it doesn't bother me. Good luck with yours. Like, no one yeah. wants to hear that. They yeah. want to hear the reality, right? So on the other side, it's the people who are kind of closest to me or it's scenarios where maybe you saw me in page six and you're like, oh gosh, like I don't want to work with her. So then it's like impacting my business, right? So the way that I deal with that is like, I experience the moment, like right now, currently I'm dealing with a little storm and I experience it and I'm really all about like take like the first process I said take one that's so Hollywood <laughs> take one <laughs> and action <laughs> Um, is to like really feel the moment, right? Like we, we think that we need to rush past emotion. But the truth about emotion is that when you give it a moment, it stays in motion, right? right? So that's what's really cool about it. So I think that the reality for me is that if I don't validate my own self, my own feelings, then where does that stuff go? It sits inside of me. And I, I talk about like a big shift because there are seasons of my life. I went through trailer parks in Georgia with like traumatic abuse. And so there have been seasons of my life when like the ship of Rachel has has been like taken on water, right? And that, right. that stuff is going down yeah. and you can feel it, right? Like you're easily irritable, you, everything's affecting you. You're like, oh, she looks so dumb. Like you've got all this right. hater going on, right? And it's because like you're feeling all this weight in yourself. Cause you've let so, it store, you build up. Exactly, because you haven't dealt with it. You right. haven't let that emotion be in motion and move out. So the first thing you wanna do is feel it, right? right. And, and then it's kind of like taking a second to like acknowledge what's happening. And then the second move is to remove the hole. Right, using that ship as an example, you don't want to sit here and say Namaste, praise baby Jesus, when <laughs> right. you actually don't plug the hole because right. you got a critical issue happening, right? Right. So in a situation, if it's people around me, if it's business opportunities around me, I have to take a beat and say, okay, like, like, do I need to cut this person, scenario, opportunity out of my life? Let Is go. this really giving me enough like opportunity and joy to counteract all this other stuff? And Sometimes there are things in life, and this is really important, that you are giving you into and yeah. they're not giving you anything back, right? right? But that's a ministry. That's like your gift to the world. That's like your your opportunity, your tithe to say like, hey, I'm going to give you 10% of me because I'm so grateful. I'm so honored and blessed to be in this world that I have, right? So th that's beautiful. That's right. like that's not like a like a one a two-way street. Right. But when you're in friendship and you're in business, you need to be having a two-way street, exactly. right? I'm not going to sign over a license deal with my brand if I'm not like getting, getting something in return back. right so there so I think that it's really important to think through what you're getting out of something and make sure that it fits so feel it and then plug it like right. remove whatever it like is almost like a pros and cons and if there's more cons then ditch it a hundred percent yeah and also realize that timing's a huge thing right there's a season for all things right so yes. it's really important to acknowledge maybe this is just a no for now maybe it's just a pause maybe yep. it's like hey I see that you want this I get it but it's not the right moment right and being kind to yourself and loving yourself and treating yourself like the little sweet baby that you are. Yeah. Like we might be boss queens, powerhouses, <laughs> taking on the world all day, but we're still like little humans on the inside yeah. who have feelings and those feelings matter. And then when we can start to acknowledge that, we can see that person in other people. And instead of us feeling like, oh, I can't feel bad for her because look at what I'm going through. It's like, no, I gave myself the space. Yeah. And now when I step outside my home, I'm giving you space. I'm giving everyone I encounter space. Right. I always say like, you are you are the only you, and that is your superpower. I know that's on your Instagram. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I, I love that. But also, like 
we can't lose sight of that childhood spirit in us because mm -hmm. we are still that little girl. Yes. And when we look in the mirror, we have to remember that we are the person we've been looking for. Yes. So, you know, yes, outside in the real world, there's so many no's mm -hmm. and you just have to ignore them and say like, yes, yes, yes. Because the universe is saying yes. So if you're like, I'm not skinny enough, the universe is saying yes. But if you were like, I am strong, I am sexy, I am confident, I am making a difference. The universe is saying yes. Exactly. And and also acknowledging that if you validate yourself and you acknowledge you're already exactly where you should be in this exact moment. Right. Like really take a pause. Like you're already exactly where you should be. Yeah. Like sitting down, whoever's listening to this, watching this, it's like, this is where you're supposed to be. Right. Like, so there's nothing to judge. Yeah. So maybe tomorrow you're a little bit more evolved as a human being, but that doesn't mean that today doesn't matter and this moment doesn't matter because it's actually all you have. So I think when you kind of free yourself up to validate right. yourself, it's like, I actually don't go out into the world to get validation. I don't go on television shows to get validation. I was just on the Hills New Beginnings and I was like in this whole scene and they like cut a bunch of it out. And so you're, I'm in there for like a split little moment. I'm like, what's up? And I have all these people like <laughs> seeing me little screenshots. But imagine if my self-worth was tied up into that moment. I mean, uh, where would I be? I'd be calling a therapist. I'd be on a ride to like Palisades. Oh, yeah. Like help me. Someone put me in rehab. It's like, but like, that's not my move. Like, I love you know, that. you can't you can't match your happiness with someone or something or an expectation. No. If you're happy with yourself, then no matter the outcome, you're good. A hundred percent. And for me, like my, the key to, for me personally has been my faith. Like I'm Christian and I'm like, yeah. hey, like having something to fall back on has really helped me. Whatever it is for each person, you need something that's bigger than you that you can kind of center yourself in because there will be the days when the self-doubt creeps in, right? Yeah. Those negative thoughts creep in. I'm a I'm like obsessed with positive affirmations, like speaking positive voice, like yeah. um, notes into yourself, into your life, those life giving messages. And I love the thought of like, hey, play your favorite music in the background, yep. get up your voice recorders and whether you write them down before and you read them off to yourself or you just kind of power chat yourself yeah. through like, I'm fierce, I'm powerful, I'm beautiful, I'm loved because I'm exist. I'm beautiful and everyone loves me. <laughs> like whatever it, it is, is yeah. right? That's so powerful because those are like, for me, my love language is words of affirmation. So when like when I am able to pour that into myself, I feel like so liberated because I'm actually yeah. not sitting here waiting for you to tell me you like me because I like me. Right. And I it, my fashion is kind of like a big piece of my business yeah. and I love fashion. It's like uh, like, excuse me, her so outfit. I'm like, I literally told I her before. You. I was like, I want everything you wear. You're so, so before sweet. you give it away, just hand it You're over. You're so sweet. Well, this is White Fox, and I'm obsessed with that brand because they've got all the tassels. I love and I just the like I should salsa all day. <laughs> ah. And speaking of fashion, I always say like, if you want to make a change, wake up, make your bed, and put on an outfit your higher self would put on. Yeah, and I feel I like that. you wake up every day and you're like, okay, what is Rachel <laughs> feeling today? She's feeling the shimmy, shimmy dress, the gold hoops. But I feel like when you look good, you feel good. A hundred percent. I love fashion. I mean, even when I was a little kid and we were so broke on food stamps, I would still like find little outfits and like tie them up and up. turn a shirt into a dress and all these different things. And it was kind of my way of expressing myself. And for me at the time, it was kind of like trying to hide where I was from. But then as I've gotten older, like I've loved that. I have such a fun side to that, right? Like yeah. I'll go on Amazon and spend $25 on a top and gladly proclaim that that's how much it costs me, right? right? Because I think it's amazing to think that you really can look amazing on any budget, any size, any style. Like that's really important because sometimes we feel like, oh, when I'm at this goal weight or when I have this much money or when I've accomplished this, then I'll do it. It's like, yeah. no, like you're saying the higher self. It's like, no, think about like dress for your mode, dress for where you want to be yeah. and, and know that what's cool about it is sometimes when you're in that yes spot, right? You got your makeup done, your hair make uh, done, and yeah. you've got the perfect outfit on, and someone calls you and is like, hey, Jess, do you want to come and meet with my producer friend or this and that? Right. You're actually more inclined to go because you're ready. Yeah. And I think that's the kind of cool stuff that's so special right. about being able to use the platforms that we have and sometimes just fake it until you make it. That's what I was doing in trailer parks. Like, there's really no time when you can't say, like, hey, like, I aspire to be at that place. I never could have dreamed as a little kid that I would get to do all the things that I do. Like what a 
insane blessing and gift right. that that I'm I'm blessed with now. Right. But but at the same time, I always think about those girls in trailer parks right now in the floor of their closets in depression. Like, how do I love on them? How do I inspire them that whatever they're going through, that there's kind of like a two way thing. It's like, how do I heal myself from the inside? But how do I also like present it on the outside of what I would like to be? Right. Because that kind of works in tandem with where you're going in life. Right. So you like you mentioned a really like you grew up in a trailer park yeah. so what was that switch because you could have stayed in that life like what was that switch where it was like there's more to me like what like how did you discover your purpose I mean you know it's so funny I I feel like for me it was kind of like this little voice of like hope in my heart like ever since I was little just like I wanted to change my stars I actually think I saw that in like a night's tale and I was like oh my gosh like they were talking about that in the movie and I think back on it, it makes me like tear up a little bit because I think about the people who are struggling in this very moment right now and are dreaming about being able to change their outcome their life their stories like how beautiful that you really can do that right right and um and so I think there was like kind of always this little hope in me even though it was really activated and then when I started dating I didn't want people to know I lived in a trailer park so I would literally walk a mile to be at the bowling alley <laughs> as if picking me up from a bowling alley was better <laughs> but, but in my head it was like oh look, like, I'm alley. like trying to climb up you know and then I started working when I was 13 years old I went into management when I was assistant management when I was 15 and then like full-on management when I was 16 and then went into corporate and then by the time I moved to LA I kind of had this understanding of business because I had like leaned in and worked really hard because I knew that I was kind of starting behind home base, but I knew that I could still get there. And I just grinded and worked really hard. And I didn't really know where I was going or why, but I knew I just wanted to run from where I was. Right. And then there was a point in my life, very recently actually, where I hit success and I was like, dude, like, this is awesome, but like, where is the significance? Because yeah. I had to be honest about the fact that I was kind of, I'd become a workaholic and my defense mechanisms of like embarrassment and shame from trauma was like, oh, let me go over here so you don't see that person that I feel like I am underneath. Oh. And, um, and part of that like helped me from a career perspective, right? But on a heart level, it continued to shun that little person inside of me. Right. It was like, you're not good enough. And so I had to focus on like loving that person and like tuning into what she needed and what she wanted yeah. and then part of that process was actually getting to be at a crossroads in my career to be like hey you know what like it's time that I actually live from the heart even more than I've ever thought I thought I was but there was a blockage for me and yeah. then kind of pushing through that and it's all the journey like yeah. it really is you can't predict it like right. and iteration is the power of it because right. you might go in one direction and think oh this is where I'm going I'm gonna be a, an, an actress or I never want to be an actress because I can't be fake and I cannot memorize a script to save my soul <laughs> <laughs> but but like let's say that's that's what you want to do and maybe like you get right up there and then you're like you know what I actually want to do this I want to do that it's like there's something really beautiful about inviting iteration because when you start out to do something you're not as evolved as you are hopefully when you right. get there so then you've grown as a person and maybe you don't want to do the same thing you wanted so what was that switch like how did you become more vulnerable and you're just like i need to let this girl outside i actually watched um this thing by brene brown on youtube oh, love her yes I brene mean, brown i mean I think being vulnerable is brave yeah when you're trying so to hide brave. it or try to know it all that's no and people see right through it, first of all. Yeah. So you, your pride can take a hit there. And also, it's just that, like, it's not real. And 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 I think that our pride kind of keeps us stuck because it's like, no, I'm going to, like you said earlier, like, repellent. Like, yeah. you're kind of repellent to anything in that case. You were saying in a positive light, but this is more negative. It's like, like oh, nothing can get to me because I'm, like, I'm so protected. And what I loved was Brene Brown literally said, you can't choose what you're blocking out. So you might block out pain and hurt and sadness and loneliness and loss but you're also like tuning out all of those other beautiful things that are kind of waiting to, to be discovered right. and so I just decided you know what like I know I'm a highly sensitive person I know things are gonna affect me I might as well just lean into the curve let me feel the emotion because like bad emotions don't scare me bad situations don't scare me I literally have no fear about them I right. faced more of them than I could have been. like even when I like would sit yeah. back and like think about my story I'd be like geez like yeah why are we spinning the dial yeah. and like hitting everything but the beautiful thing about it is like it makes it gives you this feeling of life to like really want to feel it right you know what I mean like I'm not like you can't face like bring something to me that I don't feel strong enough yeah. to, to face well everybody has a story but it's like on your deathbed it's not how many 
how much money you have or how many cars or how many followers you have. It's really, it's the people that you have impacted. And it's like, how are you going to leave your legacy? And I think that that comes down to being vulnerable and just being yourself and opening up and being like, I want you to be loved. I want you to be seen. Yes. And I think that's exactly what you do. You're so sweet. I couldn't agree more. And I think that's what comes back to what we started this on, which was positive thinking, letting go of the stuff that's hurting, letting go of the stuff that's that's hard in our lives and 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 ignoring kind of the negativity in the sense of being and I and actually when I say ignoring, I say that lightly because truthfully I make jokes that I learn the most from my haters. Oh. I I really do learn so much about myself because I'm like, hey, that's interesting. I didn't think about it like that. Maybe I right. should make an iteration. <laughs> or it makes you like, hey, you know what, these people are saying horrible things, but I don't even care. Yeah. It's like it realize you realize like wow I'm actually stronger or more confident with who I am and this stuff doesn't even phase me anymore. Yeah. And it's kind of cool to look back to where you were to where you are now and it's and recognize your growth and your path. It's really fun. It's I think like for me like my path is really just about the people that I get to encounter with. Yeah. And so I, you know, I think that's part, like, I'm super, like, like humble about, like, my life because yeah. I, it's not, like, it's really just about how do I, like, how do I create this fun, crazy, exciting life and entertainment? But, like, how does it come back to a core purpose, like, with the McCord list of, like, right. we're empowering influential women in Hollywood. Like, yeah. what an amazing opportunity. And talk about your <laughs> book. She wrote the most amazing book, Slay the Fame Game. <laughs> So tell us, like, I mean, this is so inspiring, but, and it, once again, it's like, it keeps co- coming back to who are you at your core and don't let the industry break you. A hundred percent. That's really what it's about breaking the entertainment without it breaking you. And I really started writing the book, kind of venting about the industry because I was kind of like really worn out and feeling yeah. a little haggard. It was like in my like defense mechanism zone of like working 17 hour days. And, um, and I started venting. I was going to actually name it famous ish, <laughs> which is like, I'm kind of famous, kind of not famous. Like right. who, who is this beat? Um, but then I, um, I literally kind of like shifted it around because the heart of it has always been to be a sassy self-help book where it's like, hey, the reality is that women and and men, of course, but everyone, I call them queens in my book. Ah, but, um, but like anyone in this industry, we feel the weight of it so much more because the larger the light, the darker the shadow that casts yeah. behind you. And also creatives, our hearts can be like really tortured souls sometimes, yeah. right? So I really wanted to love on those people specifically. I feel like it's kind of my, my opportunity and my mission in life. And um, and yeah, it, like I I wrote it so accidentally, and within like like six weeks, I'd written I think thirty thousand words. Wow! I wrote the book up to eighty five thousand words, and then everyone was like, obviously you had a ghostwriter. I'm like, no, I literally would wake up at like four o'clock in the morning and write for hours oh because God. I I really loved it, and yeah. I wanted to share all the tips that that we don't talk about in yeah. Hollywood. These are all the secrets that people are like, don't tell them that because I want it for myself. I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to tell you See? all the stuff Be behind vulnerable. the curtain. <laughs> Open book. Yeah, I love totally. it. All right, last question I have to ask everyone. Do you have a morning routine? Um, I do, actually. So I wake up every morning, and before I reach for the phone, I try to turn off my phone at night, by the way. That's like going into oh. it. There's something about it. just nice. I sleep better. But I, I reach for this devotional called Letters from God, and then I read in my Bible a little bit, listen to a little Christian music, and then I get into my, my emails and my phones, and then when I'm getting in glam, I Marco Polo with all my my loves from Georgia. So, like, I'll send videos. I'll watch Marco their videos. Polo, I just learned what this is. Yeah. It's like a goofy, like, what is it, 10 seconds or something? No, yeah. you can do it for as long. I mean, we talk for hours, girlfriend. Like, oh, my God. It, but it's like one-way video conferencing. So you video yourself for a while, then you watch them for a while. And it's cool because, you know, it's it keeps me really grounded and close to people who I really love and stay connected with. Right. And, I mean, otherwise, it's hard because you pick keeps up the that, phone. Keeps and that like, girl in you. Yes. They, they bring out my southern accent oh. for real. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you Marco Polo while you're in glam. Yeah, and then I literally get into my day. I check my calendar, and then I I start with my outfit before I start my hair and makeup because gotcha. in any outfit, like, I can get in the mood. I can yeah. be tired AF, but, like, if I put on the right outfit, I'm like, let's do this. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Like, all day. Yes, mama. <laughs> well, thank you so much for saying yes and being on the show. I always Thanks. love seeing you. I love this outfit. Oh, my God. Um, so tell them where they can find you, join the McCord list, all that jazz. Yeah, so definitely join the McCord list at themccordlist.com. I'm all over social media at I am Rachel McCord. But mainly if you want to join a real cool squad of women in L.A. doing photo shoots, empowerment events, and small groups, come join us. I'd love to meet you. Yes. 
Thank you guys so much for saying yes, and I will see you in the next video.